Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanna talk about how we can use JavaScript to access the Fitbit API. Um, I know I've made previous videos how we can do it using Python and Postman, but um, someone commented and they were interested in how we can do it with JavaScript. And that's a really good point. We should show how to do this in JavaScript because that's how a lot of stuff on the web happens. So let's uh, see what we can do. So I just have this simple index HTML page and it's just console.logging. Um, my a response from a Fitbit API request and just a little preview of how simple it is just have an index HTML page referencing a JavaScript file and here's the request we're making so you know the hardest part is actually getting this access token that's what's the most confusing part so let's head over to uh, I'm just gonna Google Fitbit API and you're gonna have to have an app already registered. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just watch uh, a previous video of mine in the Fitbit playlist, but just go over to manage and then register an app and I have to log in. And then since I already have one registered, I'm gonna to go to manage apps and just click on one of my apps here. And like, if you don't have your setup, this is kind of what the structure needs to look like. Uh, make sure the callback URL is localhost and it's personal uh, and read and write. And I'm pretty sure you can just give like a bogus website here. Um, but go to, I found this OAuth2 tutorial page. So this kind of helps us build the request. So if you click that, um, they basically have all these settings. So First step is to authorize. So I'm gonna use the implicit grant flow instead of authorization code flow, cause this is more confusing. And if you're just doing this for personal fun, um, that's kind of overkill. So implicit grant flow. Um, so this is my client ID. So it already populated that client secret. And this is all the scopes. So this is just asking you like, what kind of data do you wanna give access to this app? So I want everything and expires in. So, um, this is a value in seconds for one week. Um, so if you go to the docs, it tells you how somewhere in here, it says how long, um, this can be. So an access token can uh, be a day, a week or 30 days. So 30 days, I, I just want the longest cause I don't want to have to keep doing this. Um, so 30 days is actually this many seconds. All right, that many seconds. So this request right here is going to give me an access token back. And that access token is gonna be good for 30 days and we can use it. Um, that's the piece of information we need to use in um, the JavaScript code. So you just have to open this up and it, it might prompt me to allow. Okay, it didn't, but it might ask you to allow that app uh, but then you see here, it gives you this access token back. So I'm going to grab all of it up to where this first ampersand sign is, because that's not the access token, just this thing is. So if I copy that and bring it to JavaScript, you see I have just a, a variable set called access token. And I'm just going to make sure it's the same one. It actually isn't, it looks different, which is fine. I'm just wondering what, why is, I guess, I guess they're not all different. I guess they're different every time they generate them, but it looks similar in the beginning. But I'm gonna paste this new access token in here. And then all we're doing in JavaScript here is using this fetch method and we're giving it the the endpoint that we want to get from Fitbit. So somewhere in their docs here, they have um, all the endpoints. So it's just a matter of finding this information. It's kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of different pages. Um, activity. There's like, there's a page on here that lists all the different endpoints you can use. Let me try to find it. All right, guys, I tried to find that page, but I, I'm having trouble finding it. It's somewhere on here, but maybe they removed it. Maybe it was an older version, but you should be able to find all the 
requests um, if you go through this page right here. So here's all the activity requests you could get, all the body and weight requests you could get. So let's do activity and get daily activity summary. Actually, no. user. Yeah, so what I have in here is just a request for my user information. And I was reading on this page, it says use dash for current logged in user. So that we, for user ID here, we just want to put that dash. So that's why there's a dash here. Um, and then this is also an important part. We have to, when we make this request, we have to pass um, this information in the, the headers. So we're just saying authorization and then bearer and make sure you put a space here and then say plus access token. And then we're just response, uh, we're just um, converting it to JSON or handling it in JSON and then um, just logging it to the console. Um, so pretty straightforward here. And then the index HTML is just referencing that. So if we go to, this is where it is in the uh, file explorer. If I just click on that, um, we have an object and we have some information here. So this is all my activity, or not activity, this is my user information. Um, so why don't we look at another endpoint here? So let's close some of this stuff out. All right, so I'm making requests. See, the documentation is you can get like lost pretty quickly. So let's look at activity. Actually, no, they're because they want a specific date, and I haven't used my Fitbit in a while, so I'm, I'm going to skip this. But you would just put in a specific date here. Um, I want to find something that's not based on date. Let's go to activity. Heart rate. Yeah, they're all based on date. I guess that makes sense. Mm. All right, I found in devices, let's just make a request to my devices and see what devices I have. Cause that'll be simpler. We don't need a date. Okay. So just refresh this page and you can see my battery's low. I have a charge two from a couple of years ago and the battery is low. All right, that's cool. All right, let's try another endpoint. And I'm gonna do this activity time series. And I'm reading, it wants a date here, but it looks like we should be able to just pass in today. But it's not gonna return anything because I haven't a resource path. All right, so just scrolling down. So resource path, what that means is it's referring to some of this stuff, like calories, steps. So if I'm interested in steps, they want us to, here's an example of, so this looks like it's getting the number of steps from the last month. So that makes sense. So we're passing today in as um, the date. So it says base date can be today or a date in this format. So we're saying today. And then the period, we're saying um, range, which will be returned. And they're giving it one month. I'm actually going to give it one year because I haven't used my Fitbit a lot this year. So let's paste that endpoint in here. Something looks wrong with this. All right, stop state today. Let's do one year. 
All right, I think that looks good. So if I refresh this, all right, we have some activity in here. Steps. Okay, oh, yeah, a bunch of them are zero. All right, so February 2nd, 2020. So that was almost a year ago. All right, a little bit more activity. Let's see my most recent activity here. Yeah, here we go. So every time I know I'm gonna like go on like a long walk or a hike, I wear my Fitbit. So this, this was like, I probably walked around like a park or something. Uh, when was that? That was only a few days ago, a couple of weekends ago. Cool. But yeah, this is how you'll get all your steps. Um, all right. I don't want to hold you guys up too long. That's the basics of how you can use, um, an implicit flow grant flow, uh, request for Fitbit API using JavaScript. Uh, thanks for watching.